Hello, my lovelies. Welcome to day 12 of our Halloween yoga challenge, All Hallows Yoga. Today we are working on Crow Pose, also known as Vakasana. This is an arm balance. It is um, a beginner's arm balance, a kind of intro to arm balances. I'm going to give you a ton of variations, so if you're like, Tasha, I've never stood on my arms or my hands before. I don't know if you think, like, you think I'm going to do this. I can't. It's okay. I got you. I'm going to give you a ton of different variations, um, you know, from the ground, you know, laying on your back, ways to practice it. So many different variations that you don't actually have to be balancing on your hands. That all being said, if you do want to explore arm balances and versions, I do highly recommend my 16 class package. It is designed to get you from kind of beginner through intermediate through advanced um, yoga asanas. And it leads up to arm balances and inversions and has a class for every arm balance inversion, all the things. So if you're like, I want to do headstand, I want to do forearm stand, I want to do handstand, those kinds of things, I would recommend that. Um, and again, my Witchcraft Wellness Package comes with that. It also comes with all the courses I have and everything I offer, all my eBooks, all my courses, all my everything. So all of that will be linked in the description box below. But again, if that's something you really specifically want to work on, I don't really put too much of inversions and arm balances in my classes for YouTube because they are a little bit more difficult postures. Um, so those are always going to be in my courses. Anywho, that all being said, we're going to warm up a little bit and then we're going to play around with our crow. So. You might need a block. I'd also recommend perhaps a pillow or a bolster. Just have those kind of around. We're gonna warm up first. And this class is also going to be our warm up for tomorrow's class, which is we're gonna be focusing on the upside down headstand. So tomorrow's class, I'm gonna tell you to come back and do this class first so you're warmed up for that because I do not recommend going into any arm balance or inversion not warmed up. Um, I do it all the time in my garage. Do as I say, not as I do. I've been teaching yoga for 10 years. So <laughs> anywho, we're going to get started at the top of our mat. We're going to warm up with some sun salutations first. So we're standing in our Tadasana at the top of our mat, hands on either side. We're standing nice and tall and proud here in our Tadasana mountain pose. Like someone's pulling a string from the top of your head. Connecting with our body, with our space, with our mat, with the present moments, with our breath. Noticing as it goes in and out. Noticing what happens in the body as you breathe. And perhaps that your intention for class today can be the same as this whole challenge. It can be something new. Perhaps I am strong, I am powerful, because you are. Whatever your intention may be, say it out loud or in your mind. And we'll seal it with a breath, taking an inhale in through the nose. And of a mouth exhale. On the next inhale, reach your arms up overhead. And on the exhale, fold forward over the legs. Hanging out here in our first forward fold, do what feels good. Maybe widen the feet to honor and make space for the belly and thighs. Maybe grab opposite elbows. Maybe sway from side to side. Gently come to stillness, hands can come to shins or to blocks. Press into them. Inhale for a halfway lift, flat spine. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, reach. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise. Exhale, hands to heart. Last one, just like that here. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach and rise to standing. Exhale, hands to heart. We'll do that one more time. We're going to add on a bit. So we're going to inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Now options here. You can bring your hands to blocks or to the mats. We're just going to press into them. 
Now you can either step back directly to a tabletop or if you'd like, step back to a downward dog. You can also do a full vinyasa here if you'd like. So we're either in our downward dog or you can come to a table. We're just gonna hold this for a moment, finding your breath here. If you're in your table, perhaps hover your knees up off the mat. That's gonna engage the core. We're just working on some strengthening here. Finding our breath. Nice big inhale here. And exhale. We can all release to our table tops. From our tabletop, we're on our hands and knees, shoulder elbow wrists are stacked. We're gonna start warming up for our crow pose. So First things first, we're going to bring this left knee to center. We're going to bring the right foot up. So we're bending into the knee, pointing that foot over our head like we're trying to kind of donkey kick the ceiling. On the inhale, you're going to lift the chin, open the heart, push that foot up towards the ceiling. On the exhale, you're going to drop the chin to the chest, round the back, and try to crunch that knee to the forehead. Of course, it does not have to touch, but we're carving it in. Inhale, lengthen, press that foot up. Exhale, crunch and squeeze. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, crunch and squeeze, two more. Inhale. And exhale. Last one, inhale, really push that foot up. And exhale, really squeeze. Inhale, push that foot up one more time. And exhale, release the knee down. You can shake it out a little bit. We'll take it to the other side. This time, right knee kind of comes to center, so we can lift that left knee up, pointing the foot up towards the ceiling. Inhale, press the foot up, lengthen the spine, lift the chin, open the heart. Exhale, drop the chin to chest, so not the shoulders, squeeze it in, trying to get that forehead to the knee. Of course, it does not have to touch. Inhale, lengthen, press the foot up. Exhale, crunch and squeeze. Inhale. And exhale, two more. Inhale. Exhale, really squeeze. Inhale, really press that foot up. And exhale, really squeeze. One last inhale. And exhale, release. You can come to a seat on your mat, either on your knees or on your butt, whatever feels comfortable. I'm gonna grab a hold of my block. Now, if you don't have a block, you could use literally anything. You could use a weight. Honestly, I could even use that creepy skull over there. Anything that you can place in between your hands so you can hold your elbows and your arms parallel out in front of you. So I'm holding my block or my weight or whatever it is. It doesn't even have to be holding anything. We just want things to be parallel. So, elbows are locked into the sides. What I want you to do is just out, straighten the arms, and in, pull whatever it is to your chest, keeping the elbows squeezed into the sides. Out, and in. Our crow pose happens when our elbows are squeezed into our sides, and our arms form a 90 degree angle with our bent elbows, we're just warming up here. Now, you can stay right here. Keep doing that. If you want a little bit more, you're going to come to a plank on your knees. So it's almost like a tabletop, except your knees are a bit behind the hips. So your spine can be in a straight line. Hands underneath the shoulders. Elbows are squeezed into the sides. Same motion here. Down. And up. These are... Yoga push-ups, modified chaturanga, down, and up. You can do that. You can do your block. You can do this with weights. Wherever you are, I want you to keep going. Take breaks as needed. We're just warming up our arms. Your last option is from a high plank, a chaturanga, yoga push-up. Same thing, high plank. Lord knows if I'll be able to push up after this. I hate these so much. Same thing here. Elbow squeezing at the sides, down. 
end up. I'm not going to lower all the way down because I don't think I can push myself back up. Down. And up. If you didn't know, I've had two reconstructive surgeries on my chest. I've had tore muscles or chopped to shreds from surgery. So these are the bane of my existence. That's why I want to give you variations. Stick here with your blocker, with your weight. We're warming up those arms, warming up the chest, warming up the shoulders. Do five to 10 more reps. Take your time, find your breath. And when you're done, you can go ahead and release to a seat on your butt. Now, if you were doing that from your hands, your wrists might feel a little funky. Just shake them on out. All right. So from our seats, we're coming to our boat pose, our Navasana, warming up the core. This is also going to be one of our crow options. So my legs will extend out in front of me and bend the knees. Hands become to the backs of the thighs. And you're going to lean back with a straight spine and you'll feel that point where your core catches, right? So here we're kind of chilling, lean back. You'll feel that point where your core engages to keep you lifted. This is option one with the hands behind the thighs. You can lift the, the hands, release the thighs. You can lift the feet. You can straighten the legs. Find your variation of boat pose. We're going to hold for five, four, three, two, and one, straighten the legs, release into a forward fold. We're gonna do that two more times, my friends, holding for a little bit longer. Find your boat pose. Holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, release and fold, shake it out. We got one more of those here. Find your variation of boat pose. I challenge you to take it one step further. So maybe lift the arms, maybe lift the feet, maybe straighten the legs. We hold for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one, fold and release. All right, my lovelies. Now, we're warmed up. We're gonna work on our crow pose. So, option one, if you wanna play around with your crow pose from a seat, just like we did with our boat pose, you can do that here. So, you set up just like your boat, except this time, our arms are gonna be just like we were practicing. Parallel, palms facing out, elbows squeezed in. And you're gonna try to lift your feet up off the mat, Touch them to your elbows or to the backs of the arms. The triceps. We're trying to touch just like that. Now you can widen the knees to make space for the belly and thighs. And I just want you to try to tap to your elbows or to your triceps. You maybe try to hold it. That's option one for crow pose. You can also do it from your back. Setting up the same way here. I feel like this is also called like dead bug pose. But just trying to tap those knees to your elbows or to your triceps. That's where you're going to start. If you'd like to play around with the arm balance, come with me. I'm going to grab a block. I would also grab a pillow or perhaps multiple pillows. If you've never done this before, set yourself up with a crash mat. <laughs> Again, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, don't do it. All right, starting with the block. If you've never done crow pose before, I recommend starting with that block, stepping onto the block. This is lifting up our feet up off the mat, so you don't have to lift your feet up. That's why if you're a beginner, you've never done this before, you're starting here. You're bending down, bending to the knees, hands are coming to the mat. Keys here in your crow pose. Your gaze stays forward as soon as you Gaze underneath your legs, you're getting a somersault. <laughs> I mean, that's a great way to fall out of it. You know, suck your chin to your chest, but the more you keep your gaze up, 
the more you're going to say it. Arms. How do we practice? They bend with the elbows squeezed in, just like that. We're trying to touch our knees to on top of our elbows, the back of our triceps. You might get bruises on your triceps after you try this, just so you know. Now, if you cannot bring those knees to touch your triceps, you can squeeze them on the outside of your triceps. That's okay too. It is significantly harder to do crow pose like that because you actually have to squeeze from your core and I think that balancing the knees on the backs of the triceps is a little easier. So, palms into the mat, gazes forward. We're trying to get our knees to the back of our triceps, right? Look at this, you're in your crow pose. You don't even have to lift your feet up off the block, but maybe if you feel comfortable there, you lift one foot, you lift the other. Play around with your crow pose there. Next step is lifting both of the feet, or you can do it without the block. Setting up for your crow pose just the same way. If you wanna try it without the block, you can. If you have slippery leggings, it does make it harder. But, pressing palms into the mat, bending into my knees, keeping my gaze up. Elbows, my triceps. And lifting the feet up off the mat. Keeping the gaze forward, play around with it. Take some time to play around here. As I've said, some of the magic of Halloween is fun and play. So I recommend playing around with this Picasso, this crow pose. Let yourself fall, let yourself just Make mistakes, it's called yoga practice, not yoga perfect. I'm gonna be practicing as well. It's been a hot minute since I've done this. I usually like to just focus on headstands. <laughs> but it's always fun to go back to some old stuff. As always, shake out your wrists if you need it. Take a few minutes to play around. When you're finished with your crow pose, you can come down to a seat. I want you to take a minute to shake your arms out, shake your wrists out. I do have a full wrist strengthening class here on my YouTube. If you're like, my wrists feel funky, or maybe you don't have the wrist strength to do that crow pose just yet, it's okay. I got a class for you, don't worry. All right, my friends, shake out the wrists. And when you're ready, we're gonna come to a child's pose, my lovelies. A counter pose for all that stuff we just did. I hope you're having fun. We open our knees as wide as the mat. We sink our hips back to our heels. Extend those arms out. And rest here. Fun fact, child's pose and crow pose are just one letter off. Child's pose is balasana. Crow pose is bakasana. I will leave you here in your child's pose, my friends. I encourage you to spend five to 10 breaths here. Let yourself rest. And I will see you tomorrow to work on headstands.